Hello everybody, welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic, hope you're doing well, and today I'll be doing a review of the brand new film, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I just got back home from the packed theater at my local AMC. I'm going to break down my thoughts on the film because let's just say it's complicated. My wife asked me immediately when I got home, what'd you think? I said, it's pretty complicated. And I think that my wife would probably also agree <laughs> because she personally does not like darker films. And so even though I'm not as, you know, problematic i don't have as much many problems with the you know the darker side of the movie let's just say there's a lot of things going on in this before we do further though please make sure you smash that like button not that fire button if you're watching over on honestly smash the rumble button as well and also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with the bell notification on that way you know every time video or live stream goes live on the channel so guardians volume three as you all know i've mentioned this previously on many streams i was a big fan of the first film my wife and i love the first film we've watched it several times together one of the songs in fact from that first movie i uh, was a blue swede blue suede i always exactly <laughs> i always thought it was blue suede and then someone said it's pronounced something different again i don't care too much about the actual pronunciation of the song however you know what i'm talking about we actually played at our wedding. That's how much we thoroughly enjoyed it. We then watched the second movie, and let's just say it left a lot to be desired. The film was pretty much a hot mess, and it was a movie where you thought, okay, I enjoyed it the first time somewhat to a certain degree. Again, me, not nearly as much as maybe my wife did, but it's also not a, not a good enough film compared to the first one to say that it's worth seeing multiple times. In fact, my wife and I have not even watched the second film again with each other because it's just never been appealing. We've always wanted to go back to rewatch that first one. I'm glad to say that this film, I think, and again, it's been a long time since I've seen the second one because I just didn't like it all that much. This one definitely seems to be a lot better than that one. Now, I will go in and just say uh, just a huge caveat, huge grain of salt with this. So a couple things to know about me. One, I'm a softie when it comes to animals. Anytime that there's a film that features really cute, cuddly little animals, uh, and especially when, even though they're CGI'd in this movie, the CGI is actually done very, very well and very effective, which is very rare, it seems, these days for much of the MCU fair, though I think that some of the action sequences kind of fall into the typical CGI fest nonsense. When it comes to the actual animals in the film, especially these little baby little raccoons, again, I'm a softie for that kind of stuff, and that is a bias that I have, but hey, it moved me nonetheless, and I thought they were quite adorable, and let's just say, got an emotional reaction out of me. I won't say for sure whether I cried or not, but I could definitely say that there were definitely tears welling up in my eye during a couple of the moments. I will also say that, as a dad, there were some moments in the movie also that maybe not necessarily had a direct, like, dad moment, but there were definitely a few themes in the film that kind of went back to the concept of, of being a dad and having a child that I thought really, again, probably floored me a lot more uh, being a dad now versus what it would have done maybe, you know, a few years ago before baby Thor entered into the world. So with those caveats out of the way, let me first talk about just the general ideas of the film as, as far as just my own general thoughts on the movie itself. First off, I think the film is way, way too long. The film is two and a half hours and doesn't need to be two and a half hours. It's one of the biggest problems too with a lot of these modern day superhero movies, the modern day Marvel films in general, is that they are way too long. I think what Super Mario Brothers was able to show a lot of people was, hey, you can have a film based on a comic book, video game, whatever it might be, and it can be a, a much more tight-knit story. And even Mario was a bit long, honestly, for what the story it was telling. It could have also been tightened up. Not nearly as much as this film needed to be tightened up. This film, I think, was probably an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, way too long. And some things could definitely have been cut out, I think. Also, the film is pretty much a, a jumbled mess. This is kind of the, the typical fare that we've been used to when it comes to a lot of the MCU movies. It's just they are trying to do too many things. They're trying to force jokes and force humor. And though it works a little bit better because this is Guardians and we're kind of used to that and we're kind of expecting that for this film, it definitely still comes across as being a, oh, we've been serious for tar far too long, we need to have a joke now. And it's, again, that same type of tediousness that has just become so so old when it comes to uh, you know any of the MCU films that have been coming out, especially over the last few years. So you really have those things kind of working against it, going, again, film being way too long, film being a jumbled mess pacing-wise, uh, tonally also kind of all over the place, and having, again, those random joke moments that at sometimes they indeed work. I was in a theater. It was, as I said, at the very beginning, it was packed. I've actually never been, uh, since I've been in Chattanooga, I don't think I've ever been in a theater that packed before, which is kind of, I think, also why I, you know, I mentioned this on social media as I got out of the theater. I wouldn't be surprised if this movie actually does better at the box office than what the early projections have been showing. I'm not saying that this film is going to be a massive worldwide hit, 
But what I am saying is I think that this film is going to resonate with enough people, especially some of the normies, especially some of the general audiences, those in their 20s into their 40s or even early 50s. I think that demographic is probably going to show up quite uh, you know, quite to a large degree for this movie, whereas I think that Super Mario Brothers is still going to dominate when it comes to the family dynamic, because that's one of the things that this movie really isn't, it really isn't. This film isn't a family movie, and not to say that the other films were family movies to any degree, but let's just say there is a hard, very clear F-bomb in this movie, and it's, I don't really remember there being an F-bomb in other MCU films, maybe there have been, but I don't really remember off the top of my head if there has been, and also where it was in the movie, though it was sure entertaining for the moment, it also, in retrospect and in hindsight, was very much out of place. It's like, wait, of all the times you're going to throw that word in there for your PG-13 rating, you're going to put it at this random sequence? I don't know, it just came across as a bit of an odd timing. Uh, you know, when all said and done. Also, there's a lot of really dark themes in this. I would definitely, uh, if, if Baby Thor was a little bit older, I wouldn't want to bring him to this because it deals with concepts like animal cruelty and it shows you a lot of things that I just would not want to expose my child to. Um, and again, because of the, just the darkness of the overall story. I think that in general, a lot of people, as I said, maybe late teens, early 20s, 30s, will probably really enjoy those moments or at the very least find much more in those sequences and be moved by those sequences more than you would if you were younger. But I, I think that, again, when it comes to the Marvel franchise and the Marvel name, parents really need to start being a lot more careful when it comes to it because, yeah... It's not a gonna. This movie really isn't what we have seen in the previous films, where there's clear agendas and clear identity politics being pushed down your throats. And so it's like, wait, if you're a family, you have to be worrying about Marvel films for either one, doing that, going the political route, or two, having these moments where they're a lot more serious and pushing really dark themes that really aren't appropriate for kids either. It's kind of a lose lose in many respects. Now, as far as the things I liked about the movie, for the most part, the acting, I thought, was actually really, really good. The villain was a typical over-the-top yelling villain. This is kind of a, you know, trope now at this point for Marvel and for, you know, most big action <laughs> action films, it seems like, at this point. But I thought that still the guy that played the, the, the villain in the film actually thought he did still a pretty good job as far as what he gave in the performance. You, of course, have Chris Pratt also, I think, giving a great performance as well. Some really great emotional moments for him, too. And all of the other Guardians, there's some also really great moments when they're all coming together and they're all kind of just bouncing off of one another, bouncing off one another with, with their emotions and some really good emotional weights. And I think that that's what this movie has that I was not expecting it to have. I was not expecting this movie to have as much emotional weight as it did, whether it was the really cute, cuddly animal sequences that, again, move me. And I, I know it's a weakness of mine, but hey. I got, I got my puppies in the background. As you all know, I love my hounds. I love my hounds of As, 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 Asgard. I'm a huge fan, <laughs> fan of animals in general. So, you know, you have those moments going on and those are moving. But then you also have the overall story. And really, I don't want to go to too much of spoilers. I think it's kind of hinted at a little bit in the trailers. This movie is really not about the Guardians as much as it is actually about Rocket. This is a story about Rocket. They go into his origins. They go into some of the things about him and and what's motivated him and and you know his origin story. And it's very well done. I think it's very effective. That's actually the movie I cared most about. Every time they went back and kind of you know unfolded the layers of that onion a little bit more, I was like, oh, this is moving me. Oh, okay, this is this is actually pretty powerful. Wait. A CGI character is actually having this impact on me? Wow, I did not think that was possible. And then, of course, it's not that long after until they jump back into the typical, you know, CGI fest nonsense. So, it's a mixed bag for me. It's a bit long. Uh, it is uh, tonally a mess. And so, it really hasn't changed much as far as comparing to other MCU films. But I think this is, this is still Guardians, right? This is actually feeling like a Guardians movie. And I think that some people saying that this is the most MCU movie since... Infinity War, I think that's actually a pretty accurate statement uh, because, again, really up until now, we haven't really had any movie that I would even have really even just a few positive moments to talk about, right? I could say, you know, I could give credit to the stunt team or I can give credit to the people working behind the scenes. For this one, no, there's actually stuff on screen. There's actually good things done. Uh, and it also includes a the soundtrack. There's some moments that they're, hey, the soundtrack choice works very well. There's, of course, the big fight scene that happens at the very end and rather there's the lead up fight scene that happens, which has a great song underneath it. I thought that was very well done. And then there's the big action sequence too. And I thought that was fine as well. 
I do think, though, that the soundtrack, it at least came across to me that James Gunn was kind of just throwing out songs saying, hey, remember how great songs are? I remember. Remember how we're always known for the songs and music we use? I remember. Let me just throw a song at you. Some of it felt very arbitrary. Some of it didn't really have the same punch as the first movie did. It's like James Gunn's trying to recapture that same magic, but in reality, it just comes across as force, just like with the humor as well. Overall, though, as I said, a bit of a mess, but there are moments throughout that I was very much drawn to, whether it was the <laughs> any of the storylines dealing with the cute animals. I know, I'm weak. Um, but also, too, there are some really great moments that also deal with the concept of family, with the concept of, of especially of, of, you know, the concept of a dad and a father. Um, and I thought, again, those moments especially moved me a lot more than I thought that they would. Overall, also, you have Adam Warlock in this movie, and he's kind of there. You know, it's just, again... It's one of those tonal things where it's like, oh, these characters are just randomly here for no reason. And uh, yeah, when I say that I would recommend going to see it, I think if you are a fan of the first and second movie, you're going to really like this movie. If you like the first film and don't really like the second film, kind of like I am, then I think there's going to be some things in here that you might still be drawn to because I think some of the magic, some just a bare minimum of the magic of the first movie is recaptured, but ultimately it is a bit long in the tooth, and I don't think it's able to have the same impact that the first film has, and this is a movie that I might see one more time if my wife wants to watch it, because as I said, those emotional moments, I think, really do pay off very well, but um, not enough to watch it really more than that, because... <laughs> It is quite a slog. There are a couple of actor credit sequences too, so if you care about knowing that information, hey, there's a mid-credit sequence and there's also an end-credit sequence as well, and I won't go into too many spoilers with that, uh, but let's just say the other big problem that a lot of these MCU films have is that there's really no stakes, and when you have no stakes, it just, and not the meat, meat's delicious, but if you have no stakes in your movie, over time it just gets old and... You don't really care anymore. So if I had to give this film a grade, I'm going to go ahead and give this film a C plus. And it really comes down to those emotional moments that did thoroughly and and uh, totally move me. And again, it, it happened several times throughout and mostly because of the Rocket Raccoon storyline. I thought that that was really, really well done. Um, and again, kudos to this to the visual effects team, because, hey, at least some of your CGI didn't completely suck. <laughs> But also, too, to those emotional moments as well um, throughout the film that were outside of that story. Also, kudos to that. So, C-plus for this movie. Have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? Let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. Also, do you agree with my assessment of the first two films? I know some people really like the second film more than I do. I just don't quite understand it. Again, I've never gone back to rewatch it. I, I, I've never had the desire to go back and rewatch it compared to the first movie. Um, and so, uh, again, this is a movie, though, I think is slightly more rewatchable, but the length and all those other things I've mentioned still, I think, almost even it out to a certain degree. But if you really love animals, oh, yeah, get ready for some emotional <laughs> moments. And if you're very much, uh, you know, easily triggered and by triggered, I mean emotionally triggered by uh, the concept of family and especially dads and kid, uh, just, uh, yeah, be ready for that as well. But let me know your thoughts in the comments like down below. If you like this video, smash that like button, like the fire button, I see smash the rumble button. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge special shout out to all of my patrons at the Keeper of the Bifrost level and above. Starting off with my patrons over on Patreon, Father Luca Illick, Hymir Irie Hymason, Garrett Searles, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Orange Chat Reviews, who you can check out over at his YouTube channel, Orange Chat Reviews, Laura, the Modern Major General Story, Rosetta Allen, who you can check out at her YouTube channel of Eagle Rider, and Miss Martin Muses, who you can check out at her YouTube channel by the same name as well. Also to my subscribe star peeps, Matt317, check him out over on Twitch, Fast Reaction, The R, Mr. Roy, J-Rod, The Beer Guru, and Zakeman, Zakeman, you can check out over at xtheboundaries.co. And lastly, to my local supporters, Miss Minnesota Hockey Fan, How About a Hockey Player, J.H. Schwalbach, and Robert Barnes, The Amazing Lawyer. Thank you all very much for supporting me. 
at that Keep of the Bifrost level and above. And if you want your name shout out at the end of every video and live stream, make sure to check out the top link in the video description in order to get access to that. Also, there's a level where you get access to an exclusive podcast that I do with my friend, John the Flip Pick Flickinger, and also to a giveaways channel on my Discord where you get access to the giveaways of various 4K titles, including right now I've got a 4K uh, steelbook for Training Day. I got the Seventh Seal from Criterion, Plane Trains, Automobiles, Kubo and the Two Strings, They Live, Train to Busan, tons of others every single week, uh, every single month, rather every single, yeah, every single week. I'm going to stick by that. We're doing this live. I just recently gave away the three steelbook collection for John Wick franchise, the amazing stash book collection version. So if you want to have access to various things like that, hey, check out that top link in the video description below. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.